The green flag is out. We are green for the Michelin Pilot Challenge at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. And look at Kenny Marillo go right to the lead. Yeah, he does, and he takes his teammate with him there. Mark Miller aboard the number 56 car, so they get in front of the Toyota. Now the Toyota Finesse trying to come back as they enter turn two. Alan Brynjolfsson in the bright yellow Volt Racing Mustang. Excuse me, Aston Martin slides in as well. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, you see the start there, and a nice jump by Tyler Maxson in the Hyundai. He scoots right out ahead of Chris Miller in the Audi. Yeah, that was a nice job there. <laughs> he just got that turbo little two-liter motor up on the pipe nice and early and takes the lead from the pole. And you see already Brian Herta, Autosport, Hyundai is racing against each other. And oh, no big move by Alan Brynjolfsson. That was big commitment there. Probably got in the ABS. Nearly gets into the back of the Toyota. Again, the split start here. GS on your left, TCR on your right. That won't last forever because the GS cars are a bit quicker. Some of them will catch the TCR cars before this is all over. And remember, two drivers per car. There will be a driver switch minimum drive time, 40 minutes on the afternoon. Here comes Hugh Plum trying to take advantage there with that big commitment by Alan Brynjolfs. And that was a bit of a mistake, I feel. Got very lucky there for the championship leader. He did not get involved, but that gives this TGM Porsche a run up the Mario Andretti straight away, and Hugh Plum takes that position back. Murillo, Mercedes. McCann now, there, nice out. move yep. on the inside. There's action everywhere, Dave. The red and white out. Uh, now Porsche taking over that position. Here's that move you were talking about. Yeah, down through turn four, just gets on the brake super late. Oh, Look at bye. that, he's up and over the curb, and he just misses that Toyota. Great job of recovering that situation. It was a little bit out of control at that point in time. You know, that wouldn't be the first time we've seen things described as a little out of control on this track. It's high speed and high commitment. Yeah, as I said, it's like a runaway train coming down through these uh, first four or five corners. 64 car having a problem. There's Ted Giovannis. We had a little bit of help. We will find out. Take a look at it here, see how this one evolved. This is uh, turn two. Coming down the hill, so he's on the approach to turn three. He's got those TCR cars around him everywhere. You can't hit the disappear button. Ooh, just big commitment there down at the inside. And Ted didn't realize that he was coming in the back. Yeah, that was a battle for position there. Parker Chase, the other car contact there with Giovannis going for position. Yeah, Ted just made an abrupt move. There's nothing that Parker could do about that. So uh, I think that's going to be called a racing incident because I think Ted made a little mistake there in terms of not recognize the Parker was committed down to the inside. Hopefully no damage to that car. He and Owen Trickle can get back in the mix here today. Got the Porsche 17, 718 GT4 RSCS fired back up. And this Cayman's been really impressive. Debut season with this new Cayman. This has a rich history with the Cayman being successful in this category. They came out with a new car this year. Oh, and there's a bit of drama. And Stone maybe getting together with someone trying to get into pit lane. Maybe some miscommunication. I wouldn't think strategy this no, early, no, Cal. I think someone was dying for pit lane. This is the uh, number 19 car of Vandersteur. Rory Vandersteur brings it to pit lane. He may have died for pit lane to see if Gavin was uh, committed to the outside. Oh, yes, he, he was. Oh, that was a wild moment. Look at Gavin. <laughs> What a great move. Yeah, that was good evasive action. It cost him a ton of track position, as you can see. I could have gone bad five different ways as Vandersteer brings his Hyundai. Watch this. Vandersteer's out there in the, the gray. I think he may have come down tar and says, I've got to get to pit lane. And Gavin's like, I need to somehow stay on the racetrack. Doesn't look like tires, Hannah. They're under the hood. Yeah, it definitely doesn't look good at all. And it, when it rains, it pours for this team, unable to finish. Last week at Watkins Glen, Rory was definitely frustrated. They lost the points. And I talked to him this morning, and last night the crew was up till 3.30 in the morning. They had a busted uh, exhaust manifold, an intake manifold, and they stayed up all night fixing that. There is obvious smoke coming from underneath the hood of this car. The team's over here trying to evaluate it, and you can see inside of the cockpit, Rory right now behind the wheel just absolutely defeated. Felt like they just can't get away from this string of bad luck. Quite sure what's going on with Hugh Plum's car. Oh, he's been making some early moves and gotten around a couple of car there, cars there in the opening lap, so... This is another team that just can't seem to catch a break. Yeah. Can't get on a roll. You'd think the Plum Brothers would have been seeing Victory Lane on a more regular basis than they have. So much experience, so much talent in that whole group led by Giovanni on the engineering box. Oh, Vanderster goes back to the paddock. 
Hugh Plum off to the side. Tough start for Team TGM and their Porsches, both of them. So this one evolves. This is exiting turn one. You suddenly see smoke pouring from the rear end of that Cayman. Hmm. He's almost got it to a safe haven, so they might be able to just pull that car around the corner a little bit. There is a caution. And you're getting ready to resume the race here. The top eight cars in GS did not pit. The top TCR car just won, did not pit. Everybody else came to pit road to top off on fuel. Yeah, and I think it's really going to give an advantage to guys like the Rebel Rock team. We talked about Frank DePew staying on that lead lap. He's done a really nice, solid job. They now topped him up with fuel. And he's only got a go of about another, ooh, 10 minutes or so, and he can get that driver change done and uh, get Robin Nadell in there. So lots of strategy playing out here. That Camaro green and white to the left of the screen there under attack from the green Mustang of Sheena Monk. Sheena has to back off here. Yeah, it's also going to give that team a good opportunity with Kyle Marcelli teaming up with Sheena Monk here. Canadian driver knows this racetrack very, very well. Is super fast around here. They have a shot at a win here today as well. So the field a little bit mixed up. 40 minute minimum drive time. About the time the clock hits 120 on the upper left. That will be the time that you can officially change your driver if you want to. We'll see if a caution comes at just the right time. Or Calvin, if they have to think about, uh, would they even come under green? Well, I think uh, you'd probably, if you've got pace, you know you can stay on that lead lap. Just keep your driver out there and just try and get to the point where you can do it on one more stop. So a lot of options out there. Really depends on if we see any more yellow here as we see Sheena Monk there. Just dropping the right side, a little bit of debris there at the side of the track, trying to make a move on Frank Depew, has to give it up. That was for ninth. She backs off for the moment right behind her. Fineshi, who started on the front row, also pitted, looking for a way by. He pitted, and he also had a pretty slow pit stop. They lost uh, two or three track cars in the track position stakes when they exited pit lane, so maybe they did a bit more service on board that car. Let's take another look at this as Sheena gets the run. It's the right-hand side, and that gap is narrowing, and well, it's bizarre there whether there was something she saw on that the debris? road. Yeah, that she was seeing and just kind of hit the anchors there to try and not run over it. Huh, hopefully everything okay for that Mustang, but now the Toyota will get by, so the Supra passing the Mustang. And so far, it looks like all four Michelin tires up for Sheena's car. And late driver change is a co-driver to Fineshi. Aaron Tielitz, who also drives for the Lexus Sullivan team, uh, here this weekend, so um, doing double duty on his first uh, trip to the track here, but he's up on the wheel, so Aaron Tielitz and that group could really have a strong run here for Toyota. See Ferreira there in that pink and white Mercedes, that's a GS car amongst the TCR machine. Look at Ernst, a big commitment to the outside. Slides out wide. Now he has to try and tuck back in, that was close. Gathered it back, but just in time to hit Eric Rockwell in the Belgard Audi. Gavin's starting to get a little bit racy here, just needs to hang out on the reins a little bit longer. Let's take a look at this. Gets in there with big speed. There's a stack up there with Ferreira. And the two car had to sort of like slow with the same speed that Ferreira had going through that car, and Gavin came up with a head of steam there and had to take evasive action. Good look at it there down the hill, and. Not enough room. You're right on board with Ernstone. This is exiting two. This is a little schmozzle in front of him. This is turn three. Now all this sets up, so you got this overlap here. Watch the two car bicycling there over the inner curve there. That's turn three. On the power. Should be flat through this little kink here. Gives it up a little bit, just trying to control and monitor the pace in front of him. You can see there that the two cars are having to control his speed. Gavin had to just uh, take the escape right there, nearly gets into the side of the 15 car. That's Rockwell there as he comes back on the right racetrack. You saw Roy Block scoot through there in the Alfa Romeo. There he is. Championship leaders, mm -hmm. two wins on the year. Oh, that was a wild ride. Hits the curb, takes off. Just desperation here as these TCR cars are trying to fight their way through the GS traffic. Was that Maxson? I believe that may have been Tyler Maxson. That's Muss there in the two. AJ Muss. Watch this, big commitment down to the inside. That's too late. Oh my goodness. Basically the front wheels aren't touching the ground anymore when you hit the inside curb like that. There's another look at it. Look to the right. Aye. Just enough escape road over there. Watch this. Watch as the car hits the bump here. 
Boom. Oh, my goodness. Don't worry about if there's any suspension damage. That's a big hit. I mean, the Hyundai Elantra is a tough race car, but come on. AJ, former snowboarder, took it over the uh, the lip there pretty hard. <laughs> it did. Well, it would be nice if it were a strategy call, but it is absolutely not. Brent Mosing now behind the wheel. Tim Probert called in on the radio when he was in on the opening stint and just said, I've got a problem, a big problem. I don't know what it is. They checked all the coil wires, but it had a misfire when they came in. Now they're having a conversation with one of the officials as Probert tries to get Mosing strapped in. We'll find out if they take the 65 back on track mm. or behind the wall, but long conversations going on right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Another advantage to a multi-car team, Calvin, is if one has troubles. Yeah. <laughs> you've got two more to go. You do. It's, it's disappointing because this is probably the strongest run that they've had all season long. So hard to see them have a technical issue at this stage of the game. Meanwhile, back in GS. This is Frank DePew aboard the Rebel Rock number 71. Currently running in the 10th position, about 20 seconds back of the leader, and this is exactly what he needs to do. Keep it nice and clean. Going to feel the heat from behind. Finn Barletta. Right behind him a moment ago. Watch this. Coming down the hill, gets a little bit wide through turn four. This is going to be a wild one. Oh, <laughs> so close. Very similar to what Brynjolfsson did on the opening lap. We saw AJ must do that in traffic as well. Those are the moments that you really need to stay focused just to give your closing driver in Rob Nadal, who has a ton of speed and experience, the opportunity to get this car to at least a podium here today. To pit lane now come some of the GS cars under the green flag in the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park 120. This is fourth place running Michael McCann. He had just gotten off track and passed. He's going to hand over to his co-driver, Andrew Davis. He had a big moment coming through turn three. He's lucky to survive that one. So I'm not sure if he cut down a tire or something. Let's take another look at it. In traffic there, looked like he's all by himself and just suddenly just misses the turn in point off of that trajectory. So again, he's one of the teams and drivers who elected not to pit under that yellow. So he could be a little bit light on fuel at this stage of the game. He's got a chance of really uh, having a strong day here, trying to eat into that points lead of 140 that the seven car has over him in the championship. Oh, look at this moment down through turn four. Wow. Don't know if that was an outlap from Steven Simpson or not. Meanwhile, the leaders are in, Brian. In Grand Sport, the overall lead, sorry, the overall lead is about to change back to a Grand Sport car. And that's the orange Mercedes of Eric Foss. There it is. Lights flashing. Travis gives him that. So, yeah, they got about seven more minutes to get that car in a pit lane. And uh, actually, they need to do it quicker than that. You've got to have the driver change down and be exiting. So, I think only a couple more laps is as far as they can stretch it to get the minimum drive time done for any Colleen. Basically, before the clock strikes 40 in the upper left there, right, Cal? Yeah, and that's driver leaving pit lane, not getting the car on pit lane. You've got to have completed the service, and the drive time starts when the driver leaves pit lane, not just sitting in the car. Caution is out at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park for the second time. Full course-wise, that is. And this time it is for a car stopped on track. That is Bob Attrell in the number 88 Hyundai. Listen to this, Cal. Yeah, you can hear the noise there from the front splitter, and then he just suddenly pulls off the racetrack. Now, this is my thought process on this. I had it happen to me once where I thought the engine was blowing up, just a piece of bodywork was rubbed. When you're hearing that noise, it's almost like the engine is about to grenade itself. So I'm not sure if he heard that and thought, you know what, I've got to get off the racetrack because typically you just kind of poodle around there and try and get the car back to pit lane. So I'm not sure if he was totally aware of what the problem was and where the noise was emanating from. Eric Foss leads in the first orange Mercedes. Christian Shimshak right behind him in second, coming to the restart. They'll have to deal with the yellow Aston Martin of Trent Hinman, and also right there, Aaron Tielitz in the red and white Toyota Supra. Yeah, this is going to be a battle royale here, and Rob Nadell with the fastest lap of the race so far sits there in sixth position for the Rebel Rock Camaro. Couple of peaks to the outside, but nothing doing in turn one. It's hammer time, just over 20 minutes to go. 
I think Foss and Shimshak would definitely try to save fuel there. It's going to be a bit tight, so now they're going to have uh, guns a blazing here in terms of their true performance. And Foss has taken off here on this first initial half lap. Boy, has he. Eric Foss extending the lead now in the 56, trying to get away from all that's happening back here. There is Robin Liddell, the green and white Camaro, trying to get around the pink uh, Ford Mustang of Chad McCombie. Yeah, and they got a little bit of traffic to navigate through before they get to the leaders as well. So this is going to cost them valuable time. They're cut through effectively right now. Just one more car to go, and then they'll be with the leaders. Here's the TCR lead. As expected, jumping away, Mason Phillippe. Mark Wilkins in second, the second of the blue. Hyundai Elantra, the third one, is Harry Godsacker. Phillippe with a great restart there. He's really got a big gap on his teammates here. And it looks like Mikey Taylor is scooted through to fourth in the Audi. This little schmozzle. Oh, wow. And here's a challenge for second place. It's going to happen. Through goes Michael Lewis. And I think Wilkins got around Gonsacker there on the initial start, I believe. It's so tough to tell with these cars. Oh, it's so similar. I think Wilkins may have the lead. <laughs> oh, the fun of TCR racing with the Brian Hurd Autosport Hyundai. Somebody off the road just a little bit there as they head back to turn one. Yeah, Wilkins does have the lead. Now he's being chased by his co-champion back in 2019, Michael Lewis. Game on. How about that? Wilkins now to the lead, going for two in a row, two back-to-back -back wins in a row, back-to-back -back weekends. Last week at Watkins Glen. Look how he attacks turn three. Really on edge there, getting the car to rotate. That's what you want, particularly at this stage of the game when they do the tire changes here. Typically, it's just fronts. Let's take a look from the onboard here. This is Mark Wilkins on the initial restart. Oh, a little moment there. He takes advantage on the 77 of Philippi, who's been drowned in this pack. Not sure Philippi has got pickup on his tires, but he's absolutely mined in the pack from the lead. All the way Second back to eighth flag, yeah. Holy cow, things can change in an instant. This car did not look happy, did it? If you get a lot of pickup as you're driving around under caution here, suddenly feels like you got a punch of the car will just not respond. It's coming big time, and Taylor's really putting the pressure on Gottsacker for that final podium position. Maybe that Audi has something for the leaders, and that's going to force the hand on Michael Lewis. Here comes Taylor to the inside, and he's clipped the left front. That's going to be a crash, and he's out. Mikey Taylor oh. going for it in the final corner. That bold move we talk about could be a, a race-winning move if you do it just right. Coming to the checkers turns out to be a bad move for Mikey Taylor. Looks like he set it up perfectly. On Gottsacker, gets the run, slips outside. But for Gottsacker, he probably doesn't even know he's there. You're not looking. You can't really see. You kind of lose the car that disappears off to the right-hand side in your rear-view mirror. And Harry just turned in not believing that Mikey Taylor would want to fill that gap. And how will IMSA see this one? Will there be any responsibility cast upon Gottsacker? with John Morley there trying to get a run on Mason Phillippe who remarkably had the lead when we went back to green and has plummeted down the order. You see the cut down left front. That's a shame. Yeah, and I think they looked at Michael and Mark as the team leaders and they're like, well, let's split the forces here a little bit. Bring oh, that's a big moment right in front of the leaders. That's the 22 car off track. That's McAllister. That was a wild ride. Nice job there by Wilkins by just keeping his head there, not panicking. Let's take a look. This is turn three again. It's a problem area. The road continues to turn, and you just run out of room. Car's on the wrong trajectory, the wrong radius there. And it just picks you up and almost vacuums him off the circuit. How did he keep it out of the barrier? Oh, just! Yeah, I'm not sure if that left rear quarter panel maybe got a little piece of the tire bundle there, but that was a very close one, being a big, big one. Hey, look how it's tightening up. Here comes Robin Nadal. He's got around t -less. Now he's putting the pressure on Hinman. The Scotsman Liddell trying to run down the American. Trent Hinman, championship leader in that seven car. He's got a lot to race for today. Doesn't want to get into too much trouble with Robin at the end of this race. Now, oh, God, I think big picture. A little twitch there by Eric Foss. He turned in over the top of the hill. That's going to make his teammate ever closer. Shimshak on the charge. Taking a look now, Christian Shimshak. Does he get the 72 around? Right-hander here. He can't do it. That was a little mistake by Eric Foss there, whether his car's just not 
keeping its balance here late in the run. Look at Liddell, looking for a way through. Shimshak's car, second in line. It has been the best of the three Marilla Racing Mercedes this weekend. It was on pole, and it's trying for the win here if he can get by. Well, his teammate, we used to work for the team as an engineer, so he knows how to set up a race car. He's got a good car for his teammate with a 72 car, putting the pressure on for the lead now. Down the long Mario Andretti straightaway. Will this be the opportunity that Christian Shimshak has wanted? He's going to get side by side. What will they do going to high speed turn eight? Fast as can he, fast as can he. Kind of creeps out to the outside there, doesn't want to give him the room. Fights it to the apex. Nice job by Eric Fast there, just really heads up driving. Another right-hander. Shimshak couldn't do anything. Hinman still holding off Liddell. Liddell there trying to set up this final corner and get the run. These cars are so evenly matched. We talked about the parity in this championship. Five different manufacturers seeing victory lane so far this season. Can that Camaro get to the front and make it six? Or maybe the Toyota even. Traffic in and out of the way nicely for Eric Foss. They've gapped Hinman a little bit. Oh, up, Foss is off and on. He loses traction coming out of the final corner. Making little mistakes here as his car balance is going away, maybe. Second mistake in the last few laps for Eric Foss. Christian Shimshak unable to capitalize at this point. Settles it down there. Just approached that corner a little bit easier. Didn't get twitchy up over the top. Just got to hit his marks now. Watch Liddell, fourth car in line. He's all over the Aston Martin. Can he make it work? Yeah, him and the cork in the bottle for Liddell now, trying to get to those front cars. Unfortunately, he's running out of time. Great run. Can he get on the podium, however? That would be strong for Chevrolet. Mercedes still leads 1-2. Looking good. Good clean exit there by Foss. The Dow really tried to set up him in there. See what he does here. Does he try and use the draft? Tealitz in the shadows. One through five running together here. Final lap at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park for the Michelin Pilot Challenge this afternoon. And it has been a good one all the way through, but teammates fighting for the win here at the end. Foss looking to become the first repeat winner on the 2022 campaign. Two races ago, Eric Foss won at Mid-Ohio with co-driver Kenton Cook. Today, through the final corner, Eric Foss is going to win at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park again. Fantastic stuff. Meanwhile, looking back, TCR, it is still just this close. Mark Wilkins leading over teammate Michael Lewis coming to the checkers. Let's not forget, they started last on the field with Wilkins and Wickens not running and qualifying here yesterday, but his teammates putting the pressure on. Here comes Michael Lewis. Tiny little mistake there from Mark Wilkins. Will it be enough for Lewis? Doesn't look like it. Through the final corner. Mark Wilkins is going to take his team, the 33, with Robert Wilkins to victory two races in a row. How sweet is that on home soil for the two Canadians?